housing, one of our locations. I'll take you inside and we'll take a look at some of the accommodations and the do's and the don'ts of the apartment. So let's go. Hello, my name is Dale Christie. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Nice Dale? to meet you. Um, we're going to talk about our electric stove here that we have on our properties at CAE. Um, we have low settings and high settings for all four burners, broiler and bake, and different temperatures to bake at. Um, we try not to cook on high temperatures all the time so that it doesn't it'll eliminate some of the risks of a potential fire or electrical shock and damaging the burner coils that come out. These could catch on fire, deteriorate, become a problem. Cooking on high heat also result in damage to a pan if it's cooked on too high of a heat. And scraping it like this will create friction which creates the hole and give electrical shock which could send you to the hospital. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> so we want to try to avoid cooking on high heat do. at cost. All right guys, so another thing that our apartments have are washers and dryers, and it seems pretty straightforward, but there is a lot we need to know about it. So here we go. So we have our dryer. First of all, we want to make sure that we clean the lint traps. So you see there's some stuff in here. And then with our washers, you'll adjust the settings to uh, whether it's a small load, a medium load, or large. We don't want to waste water, so we're only going to use how much we need. And then you can decide uh, if you're doing delicates or casuals, what kind of temperature you want, and then you add your soap. Uh, little tip here, you guys have white uniforms. Remember to check your pockets for pens. You don't want to wash them because the ink will come out and you're going to have a gray uniform after that. We want to reiterate that if you want to prevent a dryer fire, the most important thing you can do is clean your lint trap before every load. The leading cause of closed dryer fires is a failure to clean the dryer of dust, fiber, and lint, and that's why washer and dryer maintenance is important. All right, guys, I know we joke around a lot, but there are a lot of risks here in your apartment, and it's very important that we stay safe and use our appliances appropriately. <laughs> Why not? Well, the garbage disposal is not for garbage. It's to dispose of certain foods. Oh, Yeah. my bad. <laughs> so, Dale, what are some of the things that we should not be putting in our garbage disposal? Well, Christy, disposal? I'm glad you asked. Certain things cannot go down the garbage disposal. Popcorn being one of them, help yourself. <laughs> Seeds will jam inside the propellers down there and will not let the food extract out. It'll cause the the unit to freeze up, trip the circuit, could burn out the garbage disposal. Pistachios, the shells, the peanuts themselves, fruit in the peel still will jam up the gears inside there. Okay. Noodles will do the same. Rice will fill up the plumbing line and create a big blockage. Other types of noodles, and if you cook with vegetable oil, do not dump the oil down there either because the sludge from that will start backing up the pipes and then we'll have a big plumbing issue which could run into thousands of dollars worth of damage. 
Okay. The only things you should be putting down there maybe are light scrapings of hamburger meat or a piece of chicken without the bone, key, some salad, just small, very small items to, to get them out instead of putting them in the garbage and creating a mess for flies and, and maggots and stuff like that. Great, thanks Dale. You got it. Oh my goodness. Now, you know, we talked about this. No metal objects of any kind inside the microwave. Well, why? What do you think is going to happen? Well, what could happen is a possible sparky party that you don't want. Ooh. And that could destroy the microwave. Not only that, short out the entire apartment along with the building itself. And it's not, it's not a good thing to have anything that's metal inside your microwave. Good to know. Could that cause a fire as well? It could definitely most cause a fire. What it'll do is it'll start to arc inside the microwave. And then once it starts arcing, once it starts sparking, it'll just catch every electrical item that's inside that microwave and set it on fire. Mm -hmm. Not to mention know. your pizza you just put in there. It's not good. <laughs> not good at all. Burnt pepperoni. Yeah. All right, guys. Another thing to keep in mind is we don't need to clean our apartments. Uh, you need to keep it clean, not only for yourself, but for your roommates. And when you move out, it's gonna be a lot easier because you won't have to scour the whole apartment for hours. So here's some examples of stuff you can use. Uh, for stainless steel, if you're gonna hand wash your dishes, just any kind of dish soap is fine. Uh, for example, for the dishwasher, if you're gonna use the machine, there's like little finished pods you could use. And then there's this Lysol uh, for the floor. If you have any questions about what's okay for the uh, appliances and what's not, please ask us. We're always here to help you and it's not a silly question. Let's talk a little bit now about the proper care and feeding of your automatic dishwasher. We'll start off with this wonderfully informative piece from Consumer Reports. For as long as dishwashers have been around, people have been arguing over the right way to load them. We're gonna settle those disputes once and for all by showing you the best method for most machines. Proper loading is important, but you also want to choose a great detergent. And keep that rinse aid dispenser filled for fast, streak-free drying. With modern dishwashers, a pre-rinse cycle is no longer necessary. Only detergents that are specifically formulated for dishwashers should be used in these appliances. These create no suds during the cycle. From time to time, you're just going to want to do a small load of dishes in the dish sink. That's when you would use dishwashing liquid. Now, we get it. We've all asked ourselves, hey, if I'm out of dishwasher detergent, can I use regular liquid dish soap in my dishwasher? After all, ordinary dish liquid has a similar consistency to liquid dishwasher detergent, and depending upon the brand, it can be a whole heck of a lot cheaper. But substituting regular liquid dish soap for dishwasher detergent is a terrible idea. Ordinary dish and hand soaps are intended to create lots of foamy suds. If you fill the soap container in your dishwasher with ordinary dish liquid, the resulting suds will fill your dishwasher with suds and then overflow from the appliance to the floor. Only detergents that are specially formulated for dishwashers should be used in these appliances. These create no suds during the cycle. Alright guys, next we're going to talk about how we can clean our shower and tub. 
Yes, I'll take care of this risky thing. So sorry about that. All right, well now that we've taken care of that risk, uh, what you can use to clean your tub is, this is a good one, Clorox, but make sure that whatever you purchase that it says bleach free. What happens to the bathtub if you use bleach in it is it will pull up the finish and it starts to chip away and then you're gonna end up having to pay to replace that at the end when you move out and it's not cheap. Also make sure that with the sponges you have something soft on the side. We want to avoid the scratchy textures. We're not trying to scratch the tub, so something soft. So we could use that for the bath. And then for the uh, toilet, this Lysol is a good one. It has a nice spout here so you can spray it all the way around the bowl. And then we have a brush here where you can scrub it and then just flush and then it goes right back in its holder. Another great investment is uh, flushable wipes. And this one's by Cotton Out, has a little tab here, so you just pull them out, use it, and it is flushable instead of some of the other options. Such as a bidet. We do not stall, install bidets here. Okay, when your smoke alarm starts chirping, don't remove it. Go get a replacement battery. This is very important to keeping you safe. Same with the sprinkler, also very important, don't hang anything from it. It has a crystal inside of it that if it breaks, will make it rain and flood your apartment. That was quite a rough day looking out from all that risk. There is no drinking or smoking on CAE property. <laughs>